I'm Jeff Grizzell and I work as a forest hydrologist with the Forest Practices Program of the State of Washington Department of Natural Resources. I'm here today to help explain how to properly identify and measure bankful channel width in the field. Bankful width is an important part of our new forest practices rules for several reasons. First of all, we rely on bankful width to help us determine appropriate water types, particularly for fish bearing streams. We also use bankful width because it helps us determine where riparian protection measures should begin. In addition, we also use it to help us determine the appropriate inner zone width of our riparian management zones. And finally, we use bankful width to help determine appropriate culvert sizes for stream crossing structures. In this 10 minute video, we're going to cover three things. We first want to talk about some basic concepts behind bankful width to help you understand why we're using it as part of our forest practices rules. We want to talk about the specific field indicators that you'll use to help identify bank full channel width. And then finally, we'll talk about some field techniques that you'll use to help measure average bank full channel width. So let's first start talking about those basic concepts to help you understand why we're using bank full channel width as part of our new forest practices rules. Up to this point, we've talked about bank full width in general terms. Now what we want to do is talk more specifically about field indicators that you'll use out in the woods to properly identify bank full width. The three field indicators that you'll be relying on include stream bank shape, vegetation, and stream bank and stream bed sediments. Let's first talk about stream bank shape. I'm going to move over to the opposite side of the stream where we can look at that more closely. 